Hi, let's talk today about a common digestive problem known as candida overgrowth. And if you um, have done any kind of research in the holistic natural health care world and know anything about digestive health, you've probably heard the term candida albicans or candida or yeast overgrowth, something like that. It just is talking about a situation where in your gut environment you have too much of a certain fungus, um, it, it, this is actually a fungus that um, grows and it can get just overgrown. And candida is present in a lot of parts of our body in normal amounts and that's a healthy thing. Um, it's all over our skin, it's um, in the mucous membranes in our body, it's in our gut, and when we have normal levels of it, everything's good. It's something that is supposed to be there. The problem happens when we have an overgrowth. And that overgrowth shows up in so many ways. I've seen it where people's scalp gets real itchy. Um, you'll see a coating, a white coating on somebody's tongue if they have thrush or um, an overgrowth of candida or yeast in their mouth. Um, women who get recurrent vaginal yeast infections have a problem with yeast in that area. And then also in the digestive arena, a lot of people actually have an overgrowth of candida in the digestive arena, but just don't know it. Um, sometimes it causes digestive symptoms like uh, bloating and diarrhea and obvious things like that, but a lot of times it doesn't. <laughs> and I know this because I do a lot of testing for this in my practice. It's kind of part of a, a lot of the routine stuff that, that I do. It's not necessarily routine in the medical world, but in the functional world, a, a, di a good look into digestion is very foundational to um, someone's overall health. So I do a lot of digestive work with, with um, my clients. And the interesting thing is most people will come to you and they will not talk about digestive symptoms, meaning that they, they don't feel like they have digestive symptoms. But when you um, actually dig in and do some testing and, and uh, research, you find that th that actually is a problem for them. So, but let's talk a little bit about candida. Why should you care about candida? <laughs> um, well, because it, it can cause a lot of problems, th this overgrowth. One of the, the biggest things that I notice is that when someone has a, a gut overgrowth of candida, it makes them crave sugar. And so we're all on this journey to lower intake of sugar and carbohydrates, myself included. But sometimes we're trying to do that and it just feels like, man, I just have this really strong craving. And, and I hear this quite a bit. I'm trying to do that, but my willpower alone is just not getting the job done. So when we look at their, um, I look at an organic acids test in a lot of cases to, as, as my first step um, when, when dealing with candida. Um, because there's some indicators on there that will point to a yeast overgrowth in the gut. And then we find out, hey, well, the reason why you're really struggling to eliminate carbohydrate and sugar from your diet is because yeast craves sugar. And so it just wants more and it's like this vicious cycle. You want more sugar, so you eat more sugar and then the candida grows and it wants more and it, it's... So we really have to reverse that cycle if we are going to get some traction. And, and how do you do that? Well, probably the, the biggest thing we can all do is to look at reducing the food for this yeast overgrowth, and that is sugar. So lo a low-carbohydrate diet, a low-sugar diet, even sugar that comes in fruit, which is normally pretty healthy, if, if you're battling this issue, you want to take a step back and really eliminate a lot of the, the fruit from your diet just temporarily until this is under control. And the way that you ensure that you get good nutrition while you're doing that is to favor vegetables. And in fact, that's actually a better way to get nutrition than always eating the sweet fruits. So, um, for example, I have clients that um, are working through this um, I have them limit their fruit intake to one piece a day and do things like the low sugars, the berries, and uh, maybe an apple once a day, but that's it. And then the rest of the time they're eating like four, or six, ten servings of vegetables. Lots of good vegetables, healthy fats, uh, protein sources, uh, grass-fed meats, uh, pastured eggs, stuff like that to get the nutrition that they need without 
feeding this and making it worse. You can also use some um, supplemental agents to help kill off the, the yeast overgrowth. Things like um, oil of oregano. You need a time-released uh, version if you're dealing with the gut, otherwise it doesn't get there. Um, caprylic acid, which is found in coconut, um, so you can supplement it, or if you're eating a lot of coconut products, that helps too. And um, grapefruit seed grapefruit seed extract. So um, those are some of the things. Uh, berberine is another one. There's there's actually a host of different things. And the, the interesting thing is that if you've been battling this and you, you've tried some of those things and they don't seem to be working, um, I, I do a lot of digestive testing, a comprehensive stool analysis on, on clients as well. And that is a little deeper dive into just the overall gut microbiome. So we we take someone's sample, it's a stool sample in this case, and if there's yeast in that, we react that with all those supplements that I was just telling you about, the grapefruit seeds, uh, extract, the berberine, caprylic acid, um, there's a whole list of agents that they react the sample with because not everybody's body responds the same. It's like, um, have you ever heard of antibiotic resistance? Like, that antibiotic doesn't work for me. Well supplements can can be the same way too where you're the type of yeast that you've got growing it, it's not responding to oil of oregano the way that your sisters did and when she took it so that's where the value of working with someone who does this um, on a regular basis and can introduce you to some tools in the form of testing to help you dial that in so anyway I just wanted to talk about um, candida today because uh, I actually <laughs> got a, a question, a, an email, someone reached out to me and she said, do you have any podcasts or um, blogs on, on that? And I thought, you know what? I don't. And I'm, I'm sitting here with a pile of lab tests preparing my report of findings for some of my clients and three out of the four tests that I'm, I'm looking at, that's an issue for the person. And most often they don't even know it. So um, I, I just thought, that's a great topic. I need to do that. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful and that that created value for you. Thank you.